It was the biggest surprise of my life. Uh, I never, never suspected, I never suspected for a moment that it was a this is your life. I was a young man, you know, why would they do, be doing me? I was about uh, 30 odd, 33 for four, something like that. And, um, and my manager dragged me away. It was my first, first ever pantomime and I was exhausted. I, I was doing an awful lot of television and, uh, and so my life was really hectic. And to be dragged away from a rehearsal room from a show that I still had yet to learn, and the first ever pantomime, of course. Um, I, was, I wasn't best pleased. I was dragged off to a hotel where I had a couple of um, interviews. I was sitting there with my manager, and I'm just, I'm, I'm quite a laid-back kind of bloke, but my, my manager was going, oh, well, let's just have a cup of tea. And, uh, and I'm thinking, no, we've got to get back. I've got to get back. I'd much rather get back. She went, no, it's fine. Make the most of being away from the rehearsal room. It's important that you have some downtime. And I'm still thinking, man, no, that's not right. And they, they told me a couple of days before that they, there was somebody who was doing a television company was doing a documentary about pantomimes in South London. And so don't be uh, surprised to see one or two cameras about. They're just you know filming the workings of a, an average pantomime. And uh, so when I, uh, when she eventually uh, decided to drag me back, we jumped in a, in her car and we went back to the theatre. And uh, and I walked into the theatre and there was somebody there with headphones. And and I'm just thinking, oh, well, this is normal television. There's nothing unusual about this. And there were a few bright lights. And, and I'm thinking, oh, they're doing it all all right. But I did not suspect in the slightest. And then they said, quick, um, we're going to have a photograph done for publicity. So if you get yourself changed into your costume, which I did very very quickly. I can remember doing that. Everything was rushed. That must have been part of the technique to stop you from being suspicious and uh, they rushed me to everything. And of course I just wanted to please, that's all, so I put all the stuff on and walked up onto the stage there, there's the whole cast milling around in full costume, all the lights are up and I just walked straight in to have my photograph done and as we're standing there, I don't think I was on the basket, there was a, a big props basket and Eamon uh, surprised me, from uh, he was in the props basket, I think it was covered with the seven dwarves, they were all over it. And uh, suddenly he, it was a bit of a movement, but and he popped up with a big red book, and his own inimitable style said, "Gary Wilma, this is your life." <laughs> I can remember being confused, and I can remember me in my thirties thinking, "But I haven't really done that much. Why are they doing this for me?" It just seemed it, I was gobsmacked, really, and surprised, and everyone was, you know, slapping me on the back and well done and all pleased to be a part of it. Um, so yeah, I was, I was surprised. It was a bit surreal, uh, but I kind of know how these things work. And then I was bundled in the back of a car and sat next to Eamon and all the way to, I think it was Teddington or something like that, um, to where they were recording the show. I was, wanted to get to know Eamon Andrews, of course, and I was saying, so Eamon, what's the, oh no, I can't tell you yet, you know. So we didn't really have much of a discussion in the car for the hour, whatever it was it took to get down to Teddington. I can remember thinking, I don't know anyone. Who are they going to bring on? Having said that, I had some great mates on there. I mean, Hale and Pace came on and Kate Robbins. We, a few years before, a couple of years before, I think, had done a thing called The Saturday Gang. We did a couple of series of that and had a great laugh. Duncan Novell, our pals had crossed on one or two shows. I wouldn't say Duncan was a great mate, but we certainly did shows together. And then the big surprise, of course, was um, having my uncle on with, uh, with the two other men that I... I were as good as my uncles. They were in a group with my father. My father died uh, some years before and they had a, a quite successful song called I Am A Mole and I Live In A Hole and my dad was the bass voice who sang that actual line. But the group was still around and uh, and so they all came on. So that was a lovely surprise. And um, and then the, the massive one was getting Norman Wisdom on. I'd only met Norman a couple of times but the the uh, the, the, the success I'd had doing an impression of, of Norman Wisdom was kind of seemed to uh, uh, affect the country. They all loved Gary Wilmot doing Norman Wisdom, and Norman knew who I was. I'd met him a couple of times, and uh, and then he came on right at the very end there, and he's what he called the gimp suit. <laughs> and it was great. They were all there. My in-laws were there. All of the guys that I grew up with were there. That was very important to me. They were, and I'm pleased they were included because they were guys who we went through puberty together all through our teens and, uh, and that, as I say that was very very important to me that those guys were there because they are the reason that I'm seeing here now. They brought my very very pregnant wife on, I mean that was in December and our da second daughter was born on January the 11th so she was very large <laughs> with child and um, but it was nice that all the family were there, both of my kids in, in essence were there and so, so that was great and I can remember little Katie running on 
at the end, I think that was, she comes running on and, uh, you know, they always like to do that. Another trick, as you said, that they would use, bring the little kids on at the end. But, I mean, they didn't have, they, they, uh, I, you know, I was one of the few black boys in a big white school in South London, and, um, and that wasn't really touched upon. I don't ever remember them talking anything to do with colour, quite honestly. Um, I'm not sure they, they needed to, but I don't remember them saying, you know, you're the first black performer to do this or to do that. I've certainly never set out in my life to do anything like that. Um, but it seems to have worked out nicely for me. I, you know, played Fagan and, uh, to all intents and purposes, played Barry Manilow in Copacabana. And in Me and My Girl, I was an archetypal Cockney character from 1937. So, you know, I've, I've, I've done all right, I think. I mean, the, the, the great thing was that it was to be shown, transmitted on Christmas Eve. And I can remember thinking the publicity for that would be absolutely fantastic. Everyone in the country would be watching it. So I remember feeling very proud and pleased about that. And you kind of go, oh, blimey, I've made it. This Is Your Life was regarded as a huge slap on the back, a real lift. If you were special enough to go on This Is Your Life, that was a real feather in your cap. Somebody else, a group of people have deemed that you were good to be the centre of their show and everybody wanted to be on it, just like everybody wanted to be on the Royal Command performance, a Royal Variety performance, they all want, wanted to do it. Oh, it's a tremendous honour, an incredible honour to think that uh, they've picked you out to be the centre of, of this show that they've worked so hard. I know how those shows worked, I, I did enough of that kind of stuff myself. It's, it's something that I'm delighted happened to me. It seemed to ha happen a little bit too early. I can even remember thinking that at the time. And I didn't know where my career was going then. The variety was kind of fading a little bit on the television then. But I'm delighted it happened. It would have been nice to happen with, with Michael Aspel, of course. Michael was a brilliant man and I learned so much from him, the several series of the Six O'Clock Show we did together. But it was Eamon Andrews. The show for me, This Is Your Life, is Eamon Andrews. And I'm, I'm pleased it was Eamon.